Hi, I'm back with another uh, podcast about cemeteries uh, because I forgot a few things and I wanted to mention them. Uh, the one thing I wanted to mention was that Google is, of course, an amazing tool for looking things up. And a lot of times, if you just Google the last name of somebody and cemetery, you're going to find a cemetery list with them in it. Um, or you'll find a cemetery list with that name in it. And if you Google a full name cemetery, you might even get lucky and find the exact place where they're located. That's just, um, you know, that's just how Google works. But the uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you, um, and I didn't get a chance because I ran out of time and I was battling, was when you go into a cemetery, I wanted to also explain that you you need to look around in the area where your family's buried because a lot of times you're going to have relatives buried in the area and you're going to also have neighbors that are buried in the area because they bought the plots around the same time you know, same same years and so on so you really need to be looking around and seeing the type of cemetery that it is and what types of things you can find in there so I also want to, I wanted to point you to a couple of things now you can google on uh, on the web there and get a lot of information about this type of thing but when you go to a, when you go to a cemetery you're going to see a lot of different images and pretty much everything in the cemetery has a meaning when it's a, when it comes to images and symbology and at some point maybe we can go more into detail on it but you know everything from the tombstones to to the uh, the statues the great scale statues and so when you when you go you may not be familiar with some of them, but if you find something particularly interesting and particularly different, you really want to maybe take a picture of that, or you want to um, at least uh, write down, maybe draw it, what, what you saw if you don't have a camera, and go back and kind of Google it. Because let me show you a couple things that I've seen in cemeteries, and I've seen some pretty interesting things in cemeteries. Um, but so some of the more common ones you're going to find, I have a list here. Um, the uh, this symbol here, if you can see it, is um, not working for me today. Is three chain links basically together, and you see how it's an elong more of an elongated chain. Now, this particular one here means something very specific. It, it uh, stands for it's an assim symbol of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, which is a fraternal organization. And it stands for friendship, love, and truth. And if you happen to be a member of that organization, you might get that put on your tombstone. So now you have some information about your family member that maybe they were involved. Well, more than likely, they were involved in this uh, fraternal order of, of God fellows. Um, a lot of these are religious orders. I, I don't know much about this particular one, but that's uh, that symbol. Um, it, it's very confusing because uh, you'll also see three rings together. And that could also just mean Trinity, the, the Trinity, um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Trinity. So that that can get a little bit confusing, and it, it really depends. But this one's pretty rep representative of, of what you'll see if it's a fraternal order of the Odd Fellows, yeah, is the three rings. So now this is, you can't really see this, but you're going to see a lot of these stars around the cemetery. And depending on what's on them, then you really have to take a look at them because... This particular one's Grand Army of the Republic, which is a fraternal organization for men who fought and were honorably discharged from the Union Army and during the Civil War. Now, what you're also going to find is VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars. Now, if you were a, a GAR, you may or may not be eligible for VFW status because you didn't fight in a foreign war. Most people that that are uh, that have fought in wars in America, anyway, have uh, fought in foreign wars. There's only been a few local wars. This symbol here, you'll see, and, and there's many variations on a lot of these symbols. It's not just a, a hard and fast symbol. You have to kind of look. I mean, a lot of times you'll see KFC, which is Knights of Columbus, and you'll see some symbology. Um, and and I don't know much about them. I know they're a fraternal order of Catholic men, and I know a couple of my uncles were in it, but that's uh, about what I know. The um, this is this is one. It's not probably not the best one I could have found, but what it is is it's a picture of a lamb uh, or a, uh, embossment of a lamb, bar relief of a lamb, and you'll find these both in the stone or on top of the stone. A lot of times you'll see a a small one, very small, like maybe this big, with a lamb on top, and what that usually means, this lamb here, is that that 
that child died young, very young usually. Uh, so because the lamb is supposed to represent innocence. Another thing you're going to find in, in cemeteries, and you'll probably see a lot of this, especially in the Northeast, I guess, is the square and compass. Um, and what this means, and I don't know if particularly, obviously, but they usually have a letter G around or something, but it's, it's a Freemason uh, stone marker, basically. So that just means they were a member of the Freemasons. And the Freemasons is a well-known organization that's, that's still around today. And you can, uh, you can join to be one, ask one, they say. I have asked one, but I haven't joined. But it is possible to, to still be a member. A lot of people think they're a secret society, and maybe they are, but a lot of my family were involved in it, so maybe maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I have some pull somewhere that I don't know about. So this this was just a short little update uh, because I wanted to get a few of those those ideas in there that I didn't get in. Uh, for instance, really the uh, you know the big stuff is um, just make sure you look around the cemetery and, and see what you what you can see with your eyes. Uh, another thing is um, you should really call the cemetery if you think there's a relative there because chances are, and I've done this, you can ride around for a while and find somebody, but uh, you may not you may not actually find them. Uh, or you might. It's, it's, it's probably less likely you will unless you drive around as much as I do uh, to find the particular stones that you're looking for. So it's a good idea to call if you don't know where they are. And what you want to what you're going to want to do when you go is get uh, information. Um, some are good at this, some are not good at this. Some cemeteries have uh, path markers, some have nothing at all. It may be a map that you can find on the internet. Um, some don't have even that. But uh, there, there's really good ones out there that you can you can get the information. It's basically they give you almost a three dimensional uh, lot that they're in, and then they give you the pass that they're in and so you can line up exactly where they are so you're not just looking at you know where they are okay they're over in this lot okay so they're in this lot now 4e let's say and past 28 so now we know that they're hitting right here and you basically just walk down that one until you find the row that they tell you they're in let's say they say they're in row 5 walk down from that pass there's different different ways that they do it and you're going to want to ask that uh, some are very difficult to get a hold of. Um, I've actually found that it's the the city run ones seem to be nicer, but they have less time. I don't know why that is. Um, the ones that are private tend to I don't know. To me, they don't seem very friendly, but I guess I could be I could be mistaken. Um, just to give you a quick story, um, when I was looking for my great grandmother and my great grandfather. My uh, grandmother came to the area and went and found found the grave again. She knew where it was. She drove down and found the grave. Now, she had been telling me for months um, where this grave was. You know, you go in the cemetery, you take a right on the main road. Don't take any of the small roads. Just take the main road and then take a left on the big part. Go straight, and it's about three-quarters of the way down. Okay? So I did this a number of times. In fact, I drove from the other side in. From this side in, I drove that way. I backwards it just to, to see, you know, backtracked it to see if I could find it. Could not find it. Finally, I called my grandmother one day and I said, Grandma, I can't find this. I don't know if you're crazy or if I'm crazy or what. But and she's, I said, so let's go by the, all right, so you were in the area. Let's go by this step by step. So you drove to the cemetery, right? Yeah, we drove to the cemetery. And when you got to the cemetery, describe the cemetery. She's like, um. Oh, you know, it had a, I'm like, Grandma, did it have a shamrock on it? Yeah, it did have a shamrock on it. Like, Grandma, you sent me to the wrong cemetery. Because she said the name of the cemetery, but it was a totally different cemetery. So I ended up going to the right cemetery and finding it just where she said it was. In exactly the same position. Because she had given me, like, the shrubs. There were, like, little shrubs there. And it was right at the beginning of the flat stones. And so finally I found it. I mean, I guess that, that's another thing. Some stones are flat. Um, I'm just going to have to look down, I guess. Some places have numbers on the stones or every so many stones. So it's 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 really a big hodgepodge depending on where you go. But good luck in finding some, and uh, I'll see you soon.